Welcome to HB RV Lifestyle. They call me the Honey Badger because I give it to you straight in the RV business as always. Today's video is regarding loans on high dollar RVs. We're talking about $100,000 plus loans uh, for like fifth wheels, air streams, uh, motor homes, new or used. This all goes the same. This is whether you're private party purchasing or whether you're going through a dealership. You're gonna to wanna to watch the entirety of this video because you might miss some important information if you skip through. So I'm gonna to try to make this quick. First things first, down payment. This is where things get a little dicey with people. Folks don't like to part with their money. Even in great times, it's very hard to part with cash. But let's just use, for example, I have a customer that I'm trying to get a zero down loan for on a $125,000 uh, fifth wheel. So zero down, the chances of this loan, even though he has outstanding credit, I mean, pretty much he has all, he checks all the boxes except for the down payment. And I'll go over the other boxes later. The chances of zero down happening at $125,000 dollar amount is less than 3%. There's only probably one, maybe two lenders that'll do that loan in the entire United States. And as far as I know, there's zero in Canada. Because Canadian banks work pretty similar with RV loans. Uh, that US banks do, except for they do bi-weekly payments instead of monthly payments, okay? Most of the time, a bank, when you get between 100 and 149 grand, will require 10 to 15% cash down, so trade or cash. And then when you get over $150,000 amount financed, even with amazing outstanding credit folks they're gonna look for 15 to 20 percent down between trade and cash now you're probably wondering well i have outstanding credit why can't i get away with 10 percent well there are exceptions to every rule as i've always said in all my finance videos but there's a but Again, the chances are in low single digits that someone can get you done with 10% down. And usually it's only one lender and one shot. And normally, folks, here's the downside and kicker when you're doing big dollar amount loans. When you're doing big dollar amounts, we'll call them heavy duty loans, and you're only putting 10% down, if a lender finances that loan, it's gonna be at a very high interest rate. Interest rates here in 2023 in August of 2023 are pretty high. But when you get over 150 grand, 125 grand, the rates start coming down when you put a good chunk of down payment. So I'll give you an example. I sold a motorhome to a guy that if he bought a fifth wheel, he'd probably be in the 9% range. But in this case, he's putting $50,000 down on a $179,000 motorhome. And we got a great interest rate at 7.99. Guy was just ecstatic. He's like, man, I've been quoted 9, 10% on that type of loan. How'd you get 799? And I said, it's because of the down payment. The dollar amount, I always say in other finance videos, the three things that affect an interest rate is the dollar amount financed, the down payment, and then your credit score. The other thing to consider is that a lot of the banks beyond the down payment want you to have comparable credit. Comparable credit is like mortgages, car loans, boat loans, other RV loans, not credit cards, not something you co-signed with your aunt or uncle on, actual hard loans that you are fully responsible for. Or maybe you're married with a spouse or a, or a partner, a life partner. 
So like a mortgage combined with, let's say a seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 truck loan that you've paid on for a little bit, that would get you a loan up to 150 grand without a problem. When you wanna to go to a quarter million, 300,000, they want you to have a comparable mortgage and probably a, a loan other than that that you've paid that was maybe $100,000. Now I'm not saying you have to pay the entirety of the loan, but let's say you bought a $100,000 boat and you have a million dollar mortgage on your house, but you've only paid on both for let's say five years. Well, that's what the bank wants to see. They wanna see, oh my God, this guy has paid a $100,000 boat loan for five years, all the payments are on time. Boom, we can get, that looks really good to a bank or a credit union when they're gonna give you a quarter million dollar loan on a luxury vehicle that technically you can live in and take off and never see again. So if you are one of those guys that has like a great credit score, 760, and you hear sirens in the background like you're hearing right now, no, just kidding, but you have like a $25,000 truck loan or a $30,000 car loan and no mortgage, you're not getting a luxury loan. Now, could you get a loan for, let's say, that Shockwave toy hauler or that Spirit travel trailer as we hear the cops, or I think it's an ambulance driving by. Sorry about that. We're right off Highway 160 and, oh, it's a fire truck. Okay, or maybe, you know, this Ibex travel trailer or Catalina or Springdale, something on my lot that's a travel trailer that's under 40 grand, under 50 grand. Those are the loans you're looking for. So I'm gonna repeat that again because we have the sirens in the background. If you don't have a huge balloon loan, like a mortgage or a big boat payment or a big truck payment, let's say you have a, you've never borrowed 80, 90 grand in the past, haven't paid on it for three or four years, you're not getting a loan over $100,000, okay? Now there are ways to, and I'll cover that in another video. Um, but I'll say that there are other ways to get loans, like 401k, tapping the TP, I call it, tapping a house, tapping an asset, like a stock account. There's ways to get loans to do it, just not an RV loan. So if you, let's say, had to have a $30,000 car loan before, but no mortgage, you're looking at a travel trailer, or you're looking for a older pre-owned fifth wheel, something that would be under $50,000, that would be the easiest way to get you a loan. All right. Now, next thing is something that's very sensitive. So don't shoot me. I'm the messenger. I'm not the one that makes the rules. When you get over $150,000, and in some case cases, it's drawn at like 201 grand or 250 grand, they're going to want a personal financial statement from you. Now this was more prevalent in 08, 09, and 10. And it lightened up a little bit the last decade. You know, they started being a little more, okay, maybe we should ask for them, maybe we shouldn't. But now in the last year and a half, if you don't have a personal financial statement, let's say you're buying a, let's say you're buying a $250,000 diesel pusher, a used one, okay? Nice luxury used one. You're buying a Phaeton or you're buying a, an Allegro bus. When you're at a quarter million dollars, the bank wants to make sure that, you know what, if you wanted to, you could just stroke a check for it. I know, right? What's a loan for then? Well, again, this is, uh, this is a quarter million dollar mobile home, okay? A lot of people in 08, 09, and 10 went out and buried themselves out in the middle of the desert, decided not to pay their motor home, not to pay their mortgage because nobody had jobs. You know, the con it was a great recession. It was tough out there. And the banks took a long time to recover a lot of the assets that were, let's say, not paid. So they came up with this rule. And that is, if you're gonna borrow a big dollar amount, they wanna make sure you can stroke a check for it. They wanna make sure, what reality is, they wanna make sure they can go after assets if you default on the loan. So assets to them is not your cars. Okay, I got five cars that are paid. They're sitting in my driveway. I got a classic car. 
No, that doesn't count. What they're looking for is 401k accounts, retirement accounts, TD Ameritrade money, savings account, checking account, real estate. For example, here's a great example. I have a guy that bought a, a big luxury fifth wheel, 200 grand. They want a personal financial statement. Well, outside of a 401k he had money in, he also had a house that he bought in like 2012, 2013, that he paid 200 grand for. And when you go on Zillow, the equity in the home is like almost 800 grand. So we put that a part of his personal financial statement and the bank said, oh, well, there's some money right there. Even though he didn't have much in the 401k, he had the comparable credit in the mortgage and a car, a car loan, surprisingly, which was actually a truck loan. And we got good down payment and he's got tons of equity in the house. We'll pull the trigger and do that loan. I've had guys who try to buy $600,000 motorhomes way in the past. And, you know, oh, you know, they tell you they got a million dollars. Well, they don't have a million dollars. It's all debt. And debt doesn't count as an asset. There's a lot of guys out there that use a lot of debt to buy real estate under a business name. Under uh, an LLC or under an S Corp. That does not count as asset for personal these motorhomes, these fifth wheels, require personal assets, personal credit. You don't get to buy it on a loan with your company. I'm going to repeat that again because that's highly important. You do not get to buy an RV with a business loan. They don't give business RV loans. It has to be personal and all the assets have to be personal. Now, if you want some more basic information in the top right hand corner of this video, you're going to see a playlist of all my finance videos. Thanks a lot.